All right, the 2022 Mini Cooper S, the two-door hardtop. <laughs> Let's get started here. I've always liked Mini. I always thought that it was a rather underrated vehicle. Sure, they sold millions over the years, but even in this day and age where everyone's like, oh, there's not enough performance vehicles or manual transmission vehicles. Well, actually, Mini pretty much offers a manual transmission as standard in just about every model except for like two, I believe. So I really respect that. And this is a proper six speed manual transmission. Very satisfying, very easy to use. You're not gonna stall this. The clutch uptake is excellent. You can rev match, you can heel toe in this thing, no problems. But let's go ahead and let's talk about the exterior first because that's very important with a Mini Cooper. For 2022, it has been refreshed a little bit. We have a new kind of front bumper here. The middle portion of the grill kind of has this colored insert and we have some additional arrow as well the rear has also been refreshed we have a wider track in the rear and a new diffuser as well looks pretty good and the customization that mini offers with these vehicles it's almost as if it's like a six-figure automobile that's how much customization color options wheel options that you have with this car it's really rather impressive so you can definitely get one to your specification we have a bunch of new wheel options the way you see it here we have 17 inch wheels wrapped in 205 wide tires we have a new option here for the for the roof we have this tri-colored roof here it goes from like dark blue to this uh, body colored blue and goes into into black in the rear so that's a new touch and I'd be very curious how <laughs> Mini would handle this if it got into like a like a hail damage or something because I doubt some random paint shop can do the same job that Mini does from the factory. So that's just something to note there. But I do love the way that this thing looks and it kind of reminds me of a Porsche in that sense. It almost has like this timeless quality to it, which is pretty awesome. But you let me know your thoughts on the looks of this vehicle. Let's go ahead and uh, get into some driving aspect, shall we? I've driven this car at some pretty high speeds on the highway and for a smaller stature vehicle like this okay a more petite vehicle is only about 152 inches long this thing has some great stability okay at higher speeds and the vehicle just always inspires confidence that's one of the things i really like about this really easy to go through the gears no problems there only weighs about 2,800 pounds. We have ourselves a two liter four cylinder. That's what you get with the S models. Produces around 189 horsepower and about 207 pounds feet of torque. And it's quoted to do zero to 16 in about like 6.5 or 6.4 seconds, but it kind of feels a little bit quicker than that. It's really effortless when you uh, have it in the right gear. It really surges off effortlessly. And the best part is the real world fuel economy is also phenomenal. I've been driving this pretty hard and I'm still getting like 29 MPG. So that's one of the things I really appreciate about BMW-esque four cylinders and, and even their inline six cylinders because I'm assuming this is some derivative of a BMW four cylinder. Though, even though they're turbocharged, the real world fuel economy is always gonna be amazing. Even though the capabilities, the handling is really at a high level here, it's not hardcore, if that makes sense. Okay, this has a softer edge to it, and I mean that in a good way, actually. This is a very satisfactory street driving experience. Okay, you don't have to drive the piss out of it. You don't have to be like a racing driver to get the most out of this vehicle. You can just be a normal human being, just go through the gears, and it is such a wonderful experience. The ride quality, sure, it can be a little jittery over the smaller bumps, but to be honest, it's a very comfortable car for the most part. It's The ride quality is right where it should be for a vehicle like this that has sporting intentions. We have a McPherson front suspension with a multi-link rear. 
and I've spent a lot of time with this car and at no point does it feel fatiguing. You can absolutely daily drive this. And in fact, this is one of the more satisfactory daily drivers that you can get. Now, I admit this is not a cheap daily driver. As you see it here, this is about $36,000. And I admit that is a lot of money for sure. But this is a premium compact. So, well, what does that mean? I'll talk more about that in the interior segment, but that basically translates into this does not have a tin can of an interior. It's actually like well built in here, but again, more on that later. But the Cooper S starts at around twenty six, twenty seven thousand dollars $27,000 for a 2022. I think the prices went up around $500 for each of the models. And the starting price is great. Now, you know, you're not gonna get it the way you want, right? You're not gonna get the fancy wheels or anything like that. You're gonna be getting smaller wheels, which should help with the ride quality if that's a concern to you. But trust me, even the way it is here with these 17 inch wheels, it's excellent in my opinion. So if you wanna finance or something like that, yeah, you can definitely take advantage of the base price of the Cooper S. And if you wanna go lower with the price, you can definitely get the three cylinder models, which I wouldn't rule that out if I'm honest with you. Three cylinder engines have a unique sound and a unique character to it. This four cylinder, like it doesn't light my world on fire. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't particularly sound amazing. It's just nice and smooth. So for those reasons I like, and of course the, uh, the power delivery is also great as well, but even though the three cylinder makes far less horsepower, like 50 less horsepower, I believe, I would definitely try to test drive that because uh, these vehicles feel quicker than what the numbers would lead on to. And if you can get a cooler sounding engine out of it at a cheaper price point as well, then that's just a win-win. But if you wanna take advantage of something like this, you wanna get it more custom and uh, more of an appealing model like this iconic trim level, right, which is $8,000 more than the uh, base Cooper S. And there's another model in between, which is about $4,000 more. So yeah, for around like $32,000, you can get yourself a pretty excellent Mini Cooper. But if you want an Iconic or something, consider leasing it. I think that's probably the best way to go because this is a subsidiary of BMW. So you'll probably get BMW Financial as your uh, bank of choice your bank for uh, financing or leasing. So perhaps you can uh, lease something like this at a reasonable rate. That's how I got my BMW 440i a while back at an affordable lease price. And I just threw that on swap a lease and that was just a really easy transaction. I really like BMW Financial. They are, they are rather flexible and they're also easy to deal with. So leasing is probably one of your best bets if you want to get something like this at an affordable rate that you can actually budget for. And we also have convertible models and the Clubmans, right? A lot of people, they like to scoff at the larger minis, but I don't really understand why, because a lot of people like the charm of these Mini Coopers, and the only thing that's stopping them from buying it is really the fact that they can't put their family in it. So the fact that they make a larger uh, Mini is a plus in my opinion. And the convertibles, if you want that, sure, that's gonna be a pretty fun experience, but it's also gonna be around like five grand more. It's gonna be a five grand premium over these uh, two-door hardtops. So just keep that in mind. You'll probably have the flexibility of throwing it on swappelies or something if you wanna get rid of it. That's just one of the ways to take advantage of it. It's also a rather safe vehicle. I saw a IIHS video of the 2014 and the 2016 Mini Coopers, I believe. So like an eight-year-old model essentially, right? And I saw the driver's side overlap test and the side crash test, and both ratings were good, actually. So it's a rather safe vehicle. It gets like a, this one right here, this 2022 has a four star rating for its crash test. So I can definitely see why like a family would want to consider like the Clubman for its unique styling, for its safety, and for its fun to drive demeanor of it. It's something to consider. If you're looking at this and you're going, oh, well, why don't I just get like a Veloster N or something for this price? Well, it's for the reasons I mentioned. You can customize it, it as a unique driving characteristic, good warranty, good crash test, and you could probably lease it at a decent price as well. So with that established, let's go ahead and let's talk about the interior now. All 
right, so now that we are stopped, let's go ahead and let's talk about this interior, shall we? So what we have here, this is where <laughs> uh, the Mini Cooper starts to show its little characteristics, as we should say. We have an 8.8-inch screen, which is derived from the BMW iDrive systems, I'm assuming because we have the little dial here to control the infotainment, but it's also a touchscreen as well, so you can use it either way. But we also have this big circle here, right, which serves multiple different functions. If you play with the fan speed, that'll also show up here on the circle, kind of light up uh, as you gradually move up in the, uh, the fan speed, the light will too. Also, if you start to rev the engine, right, this will kind of turn into a tachometer. And again, that's what sets this apart from just about every other car. It's got its own little unique characteristics going on here. And there's a lot of other little small cars as well that's being made, but this is actually like a nice place to spend time. This is actually a well-built automobile. Sure, there's use of plastics and all that stuff, if you will, but the point is it's well put together. It doesn't feel like a tin can in here. It feels like a solid machine with unique designs. Now there's some weirdness here, like this door handle. It's kind of in a weird place and it's kind of strange the way you pull on it. But getting in and out is easy. We also have this optional panoramic sunroof. It's kind of split off here in two. So you have one for the front here, one for the uh, for the rear. And it's never actually fully closed. We have like this net here for the for the sunroof. So it still lets in some light. So I guess that's kind of cool. And one thing I despise about this car is the fact that it has automatic stop start. Like why would you put that in a manual transmission vehicle? It just makes no sense. You feel like you stalled it or something. So that's absolutely unnecessary in a vehicle like this. This thing gets phenomenal fuel economy as it is. It does not need that nonsense, but fortunately you can turn it off here. It's rather easy. You also have a sport mode, a normal mode, and a economy mode. It doesn't really make much of a difference. I mean, again, this is a manual transmission vehicle. The vehicle doesn't have much to change here aside from this electronic steering rack, but really I just keep it in the normal mode and it's fine. But I do like to turn off the traction control. We also have heated seats here in the front two seats. We do have this excellent kind of Napa leather diamond stitched seat here, which looks excellent. But again, you do have to pay up for this luxury and this privilege to kind of have all this stuff in a Mini Cooper, right? Again, 36 grand, not cheap. So I'm saying if you want stuff like this, consider leasing it. But it is comfortable to sit in here. You have decent amount of lumbar support as well. Could use a little bit more, but it's fine the way it is. You have these thigh extensions here, automatic headlights. Uh, this steering wheel is all new and again, rather girthy. It feels like a BMW M steering wheel. It's so damn thick. And uh, we also have a heated steering wheel here uh, for the first time as well. I will say the gloss black buttons that's used on the steering wheel do feel kind of cheap. It's not quite in line with the rest of the buttons being used in this interior space. So that's maybe something that they can look into uh, improving upon. But outside of that, I don't really have any issues. This, <laughs> Uh, the gauge cluster is also, again, rather interesting. And also, it's a screen, but it moves with the telescoping steering wheel, which is, I guess, kind of interesting. But yeah, the seating position is excellent. We, we do have manual seats in here, which a vehicle like this and of its price point, it could use electric seats and memory seats as well. Why not? I do understand that they are trying to save weight here, and this is a very lightweight vehicle at only 2,800 pounds. But... Um, with all these luxuries, I just it would be a nice convenient feature to have, I guess. But yeah, the gauge cluster doesn't show much information. You can't really change much with it. It just has the tachometer, your fuel gauge, and a electronic speedometer. The infotainment screen, the 8.8 inch one, this can have Apple CarPlay, but that's an option. You do have to pay up for that. And none of the models come with Android Auto, so something to keep in mind there. A wireless charger is also optional. It's found in the center armrest. However, my Note 10 Plus, my Samsung does not fit in here. So if you have a large phone, keep that in mind. It probably won't fit. So it might not be worth paying up for. So it's kind of unfortunate. I thought I could put my phone in there. Well, you still can store your phone in there. It just won't charge. So something to keep in mind. You do have USB-C and USB in the front to charge your devices. We do have the optional Harman Kardon sound system and it sounds decent. It's worth getting, I suppose. And the window switches here are metal, so it gives a nice premium touch and it is one touch up and down windows for both of the front windows here. The rear seats are not completely useless. I can't fit back there. I'm five foot 11, but I will say if I am sitting back there, 
I do have plenty of headroom and the leg room is fine, but the person sitting in front will have to scoot the seat all the way to the front. So the only way you can make this situation work is if you have a very short person in the front, like five feet tall, like I'm, I'm being serious here. Um, then you can actually fit adults back there. So it's not completely useless. You just need to have short people sitting in the front, I guess. And you have a cup holder back there, but most importantly, what you're gonna be doing with this is you're just gonna fold down those rear seats because the trunk space is very small otherwise. You do have a little compartment underneath, uh, so you do have some additional storage there, but if you really wanna make this useful, you should be folding down the rear seats. And the only other thing I can think of that they can improve upon is actually making this rear view mirror a little bit larger and maybe even um, bezel-less because uh, the visibility otherwise is great. Just make this mirror a little bit larger and everything is good to go here. So conclusions on the Mini Cooper. It's a nice little vehicle. It's something to consider. It's different. Okay, if you're in the market for like VW Golfs or like the Velosters or something like that, this is cool. It's got a kind of a quirky interior, but it's functional. It's it's different, but it's not difficult. That's what I like here. There's still a certain degree of ergonomics here, so it's not difficult to use or anything like that. You should be able to get accustomed with it. You have a couple of safety features, not too much. Like we don't have blind spot monitoring here, which kind of sucks, but you do have forward collision braking assist and lane keep assist as well. That's all standard, by the way. But yeah, at this price point, they should be offering blind spot monitoring. And of course, a rear view camera is standard, of course. But if you can live with not having all the safety gadgets and all that stuff, and you can live with a vehicle that's obviously a little bit smaller, you should know this if you're in this segment, then consider it. Enjoy the customization of it. Enjoy the excellent driving dynamics and this and I feel like both of the engine options are gonna be great. This is really quick, faster than what the numbers would lead on to. And I'd be very curious to try out that three cylinder option. And of course, I would like to try out the John Cooper Works to see what a true kind of high performance Mini Cooper is kind of all about because I really enjoyed this one. It's gonna be a satisfactory daily driver and a safe one as well. So hopefully you found value with this review. Thanks again for watching. Take care and goodbye.